Hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, along with my wonderful wife, Janet, and we are streaming live from the Team Needham Abode podcast studio. And we are super excited to have Jesse Ewell on our podcast today. Um, he is going to be discussing habit based lifestyle. And a lot of times when we think about healthy habits, we think about how it affects our our health, our general physical health, um, whether it be exercise, diet, sleep, which we talk about frequently on this podcast. But those habits also affect your personal and professional life. And Jesse is going to dive into that today. So Jesse, welcome to our show. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on. And uh, it's great to be connected with people from, uh, from my home, Eastern Washington. Yeah, that's right. You were you lived in Spokane for a while. Lived in had some personal training. You did some personal training over in the on the west side of the state for a while. And then you moved to Orange County. Yeah, so I I grew up in Spokane. Went to high school there. Moved to uh, uh, the west side of the state. Lived in Tacoma, Gig Harbor area for about seventeen years. Owned a couple training facilities, and then the last six years, uh, been living in San Clemente, California. Wow. Wow. That's uh, quite a move all the way down to uh, California. That's that's right. I mean, you guys know, you know, obviously Moses Lake is probably one of the nicer parts of, you know, Washington. But, um, you know, the Seattle Tacoma area is nice for about two and a half months of the year. So I feel like I had to trade in two and a half months of summer for 11 Right. And, and and you're being generous saying two and a half months of summer over there because it, it, it rains darn near every day. I mean, even in the summer, even if it, it, if it doesn't rain, it's at least cloudy, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us about healthy based habits and lifestyle. Yeah. So, you know, really, you know, I came up with the concept of habit based lifestyle because I, be, I was an athlete growing up. I was always into working out, constantly trying to improve myself. And so um, really working with people, not only myself as an athlete, but just working with people in the training industry, I started to recognize where people just didn't have healthy habits. And it wasn't that they didn't want them. It was a lot of times that they didn't know how to incorporate them into their lifestyle. And so a lot of times people would, you know, come to me saying, Hey, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want this. This is my goal. Um, but what they didn't know how to do was really break it down and simplify it. And, and so really what I started to do with people is, is create these frameworks and just create almost like a system to achieve the goal that they wanted to where it became part of their lifestyle. And just instead of just something that they did temporarily, right. And so I think a lot of times when we look at maybe a habit or or a goal, we're looking at as kind of a temporary solution, right? Almost, you know, like you guys are in healthcare, but sometimes like some of the stuff we're doing is very reactive. We're not actually making it part of our lifestyle. And so habit-based lifestyle was really born um, into making your habits part of your lifestyle um, and that's that's really kind of what the focus and emphasis is. And so, um, you know, we I created systems on like, okay, how do I start a new habit? How do I eliminate a bad habit? And one of the one of the things that really helped me was I, I quit a 26 year addiction to chewing tobacco mm. by doing uh, the systems that I actually learned. And so, uh, really, what I try to teach people is like. Hey, here's how you can break these bad habits, um, and then how to reverse engineer a new habit uh, to where I'm teaching them a system on actually how to do that. Janet, what kind of questions do you have for Jesse? So, Jesse, I'm sure there's like this aha moment in your own life too that brought you to that point because most of us have a health journey. So, just yeah. kind of go over that a little bit because you know everybody has a different place where it's like, okay, I got to do something different. Well, let me just say this. I started uh, boxing at 10 years old. 
uh, amateur boxing. And, and a lot of people, you know, probably don't start things like that at 10 years old, but like what that really taught me was the training that I did, uh, kind of built the foundation of discipline. And so I'll, I'll say this, you know, for the first, from probably 10 to my mid thirties, I mean, I was disciplined, like everything that I did was about discipline and then for probably a four to five year period, as I got kind of caught up in building my business, having kids, being married like everybody else, um, I kind of found myself, I was in the worst, I was probably in the worst shape of my life, but for probably most people, they'd be like, all right, like you're in great shape. But for me and how I felt, I wasn't, I wasn't in great shape. And so I kind of went through my own transformation process to where um, I got into coaching. I kind of found a mentor and they really started kind of getting that competitive edge back. And because I was an athlete for so long, it was kind of like when I stopped being an athlete, as far as like competing, I stopped that competitive side of me. And, and it almost like was suppressed for a, a five to eight year period. So that kind of reignited that whole competitive side of me. And um, this is probably eight, nine years ago. I, I mean, I'll just say I kind of reignited, you know, that competitive side of me and it kind of came out. I started competing in all these physical challenges where, you know, we, I trained with um, a program called Kokoro, which was like training with Navy SEALs for like, three days and no sleep. And basically all these guys that were going through buds were, were going through it. But, um, it was, I started doing all these events that forced me to change how I currently was showing up where, you know, I was doing mud runs that were, you know, I did one that was 55 miles and in 24 hours. And, and I just started doing all these events. And then I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I keep, doing all these physical challenges, but like, when is it going to, when am I going to leverage these and put them in my marriage, put them in my business and put them in my other areas of life. And so, you know, I started doing challenges with my wife where I take my wife on date night every week. I uh, was leaving her like uh, video messages every single day for, you know, 90 days straight. I was, um, you know, going to church, reading the Bible, like doing all these things to really challenge myself. And then I started applying it to business and I really just started to see my business take off. I started to see kind of every other, every other, every area of my life really just go to the next level because of the habits that I was doing. Um, and then, you know, I kind of went through this whole process of transformation for about 18 months to 24 months. Um, and then I'm like, Hey, I think I want to actually help people with this system because it's changed my life. That's a great story. I, and I have a question comment about challenging yourself and, you know, even start out as an athlete. I think a lot of us, whether, you know, male or female, when we're younger, we, we compete in some kind of sport a lot of times. And yeah, um, it does seem like when people stop competing, then all of a sudden everything else just kind of goes down. So I'm a big believer that we should never stop competing. I, I, I'm in a, I'm a mountain bike racer. And one of the reasons I, I pay for races and put them on a calendar is because then I have to train for them. Yeah. And I think if we treat life the same way and we never stop competing, I think, you know, it, it challenges us and it makes us create good, healthy habits. Can you speak on that? Yeah, I think here's what I think. When we stop competing, we stop living. And I don't mean, I don't mean that we stop, like living as, as if we die. But I, I believe that there's something on the inside of us that awakens when we begin to compete and push ourselves. And if we shut that down, it's kind of like you either use it or you lose it, you know? And so you, you're a competitive guy. I'm a competitive guy. I think everybody has some type of 
competitiveness inside of them. Some people have never unleashed it. Some people, you know, they do it on a regular basis, but I think we can be competitive anything. Like if I'm an artist, maybe I'm competing in how good of pictures I take or what kind of pictures I draw or like the creativity side of that. Right. Um, Even I can think of, you know, as a trainer, it was like, people tell you all the times not to compare but I really believe that comparison gives us contrast. And, and I think sometimes we can compare where people are at above us, below us. That gives us contrast on who we surround ourselves with and whether or not we're surrounding ourselves with the right people, right? That are pushing us to grow to that next level. So I think there's a healthy comparison that gets our competitive side going because you know if you're surrounding yourself with you know, five millionaires, essentially, you're probably going to be a millionaire if you're not, right? Or you're going to at least push yourself to that place. If you're surrounding yourself with, you know, five people that are jobless, you're probably going to be that person. So when they say, don't compare yourself, well, you have to compare yourself to know whether or not you're in the right, you're putting yourself around the right people. And so being competitive, if I'm around competitive people, that are pushing themselves to the next level, it's going to force me to want to do the same thing. And I, I kind of think of like a team, right? If if you're on a team of people pushing themselves, you're going to want to play at that level. If you're on a team of, of people that are, you know, they're comfortable where they're at, like you're going to get eventually be the one that's comfortable where you're at. And that's when you're going to stop competing. And, and so, you know, I'm a firm believer in like competition is, is important competing with yourself and, you know, looking back a year who I was last year, you know, am I a better version of that? Cause I think as we get older, we lose that, uh, we lose that sense of urgency almost. That's a good point. Um, I'm hearing in this story too, accountability. I think that's something that's huge. And also um, people that can support you rather than let you slip. Because if you surround yourself by people that don't call you out and they just keep supporting those bad habits, that might be the bad mix. That might be part of the failure part, which we don't recognize. And, you know, who we interact with is super important. Yeah, I think, you know, we open a business, right? We we want to be in charge. We want to do these things. Like, I'll be honest, like the reason I started my business, because I didn't want someone else telling me what to do. But in doing that, we kind of build ourselves into a prison where we make the rules. We decide, you know, we decide, you know, how far we want to push ourselves. And sometimes even in that, we won't take advice from other people. We won't take accountability from other people. And we don't have people in our circle that'll actually call us out or call us. I would like to say, just call us higher. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you think about it is people, most people fear confrontation, but when we, you know, confrontation avoided is confrontation multiplied. So, you know, if we don't have people in our circle that call us out, it gets harder and harder for us to to be um, receptive to that. And so then, you know, if I call out Sean, he gets offended by it versus saying, hey, thank you so much, man. And, and I'm like, hey, I see so much more in you than how you're currently showing up. A lot of people would be offended by that where some people, if they're used to it, it's like, hey, Sean, thank you so much for doing this for me, man. Because I didn't really see that in myself, but thanks for pointing that out. Right. And then that's where you really want to surround yourself by people to hold you accountable. And what I really think about accountability is like, we can only hold ourselves accountable. Other people can only hold us accountable at the level that we're willing to hold ourselves accountable. So if you guys are trying to hold me more accountable that I'll hold myself eventually will create too much tension in the relationship where I'll decide, Hey, I don't want to be around these people anymore because they're trying to hold me too accountable. You guys won't want to be around me because you're like, Hey, all we're trying to do is hold him accountable and he can't handle it. So eventually that relationship, um, you know, kind of breaks apart and we go our own separate ways. 
Uh, but this is something that I saw over and over in the fitness industry. And a lot of times by default, I would try to hold my clients more accountable than they're willing to hold themselves. And it felt like a, a really heavy job. And, and I think the best example is, is like trying to pull people out of quicksand. You try to pull them out for too long and eventually you get sucked into it. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And, you know, lots of takeaways from the last few minutes of conversation. Um, w- one thing that I can say is that, or I want to just comment on or reiterate is that you, you're exactly right. Ultimately, it comes up to the individual. We have to make, we have to make those decisions ourselves. But when we surround ourselves with the right people, it does make it easier to make those decisions. Like, for instance, if you want to be, you know, a good boxer, you're going to hang around boxers that are better than you and and probably get your butt kicked for a few months or a few years until you can compete with them. Um, I can say the same thing about mountain bike racing. Um, you know, I, I hang around some people that are way, way faster than me and I'll never be faster than them. Um, but it makes me strive to be a better mountain bike racer. Um, and that goes in with life too. If you want to be a millionaire or a entrepreneur, then you hang around entrepreneurs. You don't hang around people that have never ran a business. Yeah, for sure. One of the, one of the lessons that I learned training with Navy SEALs is, is like, you know, you have to embrace the suck. And, you know, really what I, what I learned in that was like, you have to suck, be willing to suck at something long enough to actually get better, but embracing it in the sense of recognizing that, Hey, you know, I'm just starting out boxing. I know I'm going to get my butt kicked for a period of time, but I'm willing to put it all on the line and do that and not care about it. Uh, which is kind of the same thing about, mountain biking, right? Which is kind of the same thing I put my clients through when it comes to their business stuff is a lot of people that we work with, they're just not willing to put themselves out there on social media. And so we have to say like, look, you kind of have to suck for a while at this. So you can actually look back in 90 days and six months and see the growth that you've actually made. Yeah. And um, you're being conservative at 90 days because let's face it when you're really developing good healthy long-term habits it can take years to see all the benefits for sure let me let me say this because this is a question i get a lot of times is like how long does it take to develop a healthy habit and one thing that i learned and it was from a book called Tiny Habits, and I, I actually went through kind of like their tra- their course uh, and got certified in it. But one of the things that we talked about was like, hey, how long does it really take? Does it take 21 days? Does it take 66? Does it take 90? Yeah. And one of the things that I figured out was it can take as little as a day to start a healthy habit. Okay. But you need the right recipe. And and so what that means is like, let's say you were trying to, to make a new recipe, you know, or make a new dish and you didn't have a recipe for it. Like how successful would that recipe be or that, that dish be right. But like, we have the ability to do that with our habits. And once we understand the recipe, we can just insert what habit we want to start. Um, and it makes it so much easier. And if you want, I can kind of break this down. Uh, It takes a couple minutes, but it it will be so much easier when people think of like starting a new habit. Yeah, please break it down. So really a habit recipe is, you know, we all have anchor habits, right? So an anchor habit is typically a habit that we do every day that we don't even think about. So if you think about, you know, what do you do in the morning that you like never miss? You know, can you, can you name something? Are you asking a question? Yeah. Like, for well, you I mean, the simplest thing is get out of bed. Okay. So right? maybe instead of getting out of bed, what's brush your teeth, right? Or brush make a teeth, co- shower, you make yeah. coffee. Yeah. Okay. So, so most people probably make coffee, right? So that's your anchor habit. Okay. 
Uh, and we always pick habits that usually are not more than a couple minutes because if they're an hour, you know, then that's a lot more time. But so we have an anchor habit. And then, you know, let's say you have a new habit, like you want to start uh, maybe reading uh, reading a book, right? Self-help book and, and, and just journaling and you've been struggling with it. So after I make coffee, so this is kind of how it works. After I anchor a habit, I will read a book, new habit, okay? Then I will celebrate. Okay. So what the way that we kind of break this down is like, let's just say you haven't been reading a book. So we want to make it really simple. We typically pick something that you do in two minutes. So I read two pages. So after I make a coffee, I will read two pages, then I will celebrate. Okay. And so that's your recipe. So you can really find it, any anchor habit you do, you plug it in the new habit, and then you'll celebrate. Now, here's the thing that most people don't recognize. Celebration is the key to implementation of a new habit. Here's why. What gets celebrated gets repeated. Okay. So what we do is we do a celebration for three to five seconds after. So it could be just something as simple as, yeah, you know, you fist pump, you kind of do whatever you would normally do when you celebrate. So, you know, think about for you, Sean, you go ride a mountain bike trail uh, maybe you just crush it, you get to the top of the mountain. Like, what's the first thing you would think you would do as a celebration for that? I like to scream. I really do. Okay. <laughs> so like you would scream for three seconds after you finish reading those two pages, you know, throw your arms up in the air and that's your celebration. But like what, what we don't recognize is that celebration is actually the key because if we feel better about doing something, we're going to keep repeating it. Okay. So the celebration piece at the end of the recipe is the most important piece because we're now celebrating as if we accomplished something big. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but when you start accomplishing the habits that you're doing every single morning, you start feeling that momentum, right? And your energy comes up and you get excited about the day instead of kind of dreading the day, almost like it's Monday morning. And it's like, oh my gosh, I got to go through all this, right? And that's the same feeling we want to have when we come out of that recipe. Yeah, that, that, that's great. It's a great analogy. And that's, um, I'm assuming what you do is you progress with those. So instead of reading you know, two pages, then you progress into, um, you know, five pages Four, or five. Pages. Yeah. So kind of what I, I say is like, listen, after five consecutive days of doing this habit, you're, you're now able to double what you're doing. So in, after five days, you'd go to four page, four pages after five more days, you'd go to eight after five more days, you might go to 12 until you hit the amount that you want to hit. You know, most people I'd say like, Hey, don't read for more than 10 to 20 minutes. Cause you're probably not going to retain much after the 20. Um, so, you know, read until you have something, a lesson and you want to share it, or you feel like you could share it. Um, and then put the book down and move on to something else. And you can insert with the reading, you can insert exercise there very easily. Um, you know, let's say it's, well, I'm going to start doing push-ups. Well, yeah. So 20, let's just say this. Like, all right. So after I drink my coffee, I will do 20 push-ups or I will do 20 seconds of planks or I will do 20 squats. Like it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but what does matter is that we have a two-minute window that we're going to do whatever we want to do inside of that. Because, you know, if I was like, Hey, after I drink my coffee, I'm going to go work out for an hour and you haven't been doing it. That's just too big of a gap. And that's where a lot of people really yeah. mess up on their habits. And you start with an anchor habit because it's something you do every day. You're already doing it. Right. So it, just think of an anchor habit typically in the morning would be like putting on your shoes you know, putting on your shorts, going to the bathroom, you know, brushing your teeth, drinking coffee. Uh, so like, those are always things that we're doing. That means that if I have an anchor habit, I can stack a new habit with that. And, 
And if I start small enough, then I can grow big to the level that I want. You know, here's the thing is most of the habits that we do or want to do take between 10 and 20 minutes. The only thing that probably takes longer once you've been doing it for a while is working out. So like that means that, you know, in an hour, I could probably do 10 habits, five habits that would really help me prepare for my day. And most of them would only probably take 10 minutes to do. Yeah. And let, let's also say this, Jesse, because um, I have a good friend that does it this way because he's got a young family um, and he works out 10 minutes at a time, like three or four times a day. Yeah. So you could do the same thing with those anchor habits. If you had three or four anchor habits throughout the day, you could add five minutes of exercise to each of those anchor habits. And throughout yeah. the day, it just accumulates. What, yeah. What's maybe the biggest anchor habit we have, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. You know, so it's like, Hey, after breakfast, I'll go for a 10 minute walk after lunch. I'll go for a 10 minute walk, you know, or, or whatever that is. Uh, and that just makes it really simple. And what a better time to exercise than after we eat. Right. Uh, yeah. For, I mean, at least walking mm -hmm. yeah. is probably one of the best things that we can do after we eat. It, do, it doesn't have to be complicated. So, yeah. And that's, that's actually one of my favorite habits to do on a day-to-day -day basis is walk uh, 10,000 steps a day. Um, and that's, uh, I think I went 487 days straight without missing um, doing that. And, and that really helped me uh, just being more active. So, you know, as I said, I was a trainer for 22 years. So I was constantly moving around in the gym. Once I started coaching, I started to recognize I'm behind a computer, you know, for six to eight hours a day. Uh, even though I was standing up, I wasn't moving. Yeah. And so I started you know, going for a 30 minute walk in the morning. Then I started, um, you know, going for a walk after lunch and after dinner, just to make sure that I was active enough to actually see the results in my, in the gym. Have you speaking of standing up at a desk? Um, have you seen those new little treadmills that you can buy that you can walk while you're working? I I've seen them. I've never used one. Um, but it, it's interesting. I don't, have you seen those? I've seen them, you know, but it kind of reminds me of a little bit like a hamster on a wheel. <laughs> right. Um, I know. I'm not, I wasn't a fan by looking at it. <laughs> well, let's say this, you know, for me to go outside here and get some vitamin D, you know, sometimes for you guys, it might be winter time or a windstorm. So that may not be the best time to go outside. Right. So I could right. definitely see somebody in a, a you know, colder climate. But, you know, here I like to get outside after lunch or, or midday and go for a little walk. So Jesse, tell us about your, your podcast, Habit-Based Lifestyle. Yeah. So Habit-Based Lifestyle, my podcast, I'm 580 some episodes in. Um, I remember when I first started doing them, I just started sharing, you know, concepts, ideas um, that, you know, I was doing myself on myself, things that I was personally, um, you know, working on and just started sharing. Uh, and I remember probably my first 50 episodes, I couldn't really listen to it uh, when, you know, when I'd play it myself. And then around like 50 episodes in, I started like listening to my podcast almost as I was an outside viewer. And I was like, wow, this is really good. Um, and it, so it kind of made me recognize that like, hey, the value I have to give um, is good, you know, to where it's like, hey, I can sit there and actually listen to it myself. Um, but just, you know, in the last, I think I've been doing it for five years. Uh, it's kind of turned into a hobby. And, you know, also I get a look back 585 episodes in and be like, wow, look at the growth and the consistency I've had and showing up. And I would imagine, you know, if I went back to episode one, two, three, four, compared to where I am now, I could really see how I embraced the suck in that. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. see the growth in that. And that's what I think is really cool about, you know, social media, podcasting, you know, YouTube, all these things that we have access to is we can actually document the changes that we make. 
Um, and, and I can share the habit-based lifestyle just by talking about what I'm doing, right? And, and so that helps you know, inspire other people. And, and that's really what it's about, right? Helping people transform their lives, transforming their health and their businesses. Yeah. And I will tell you, I started our podcast. We started about five years ago too. And we're at episode like 450 or so. And, you know, those, uh, the first, the first episode we had technical challenges and we had to record it on our iPhone and, you know, it was not pretty, the content was good, but, um, you know, as we progress, it just, you know, you can see, you know, you can see us getting better and, um, you know, having better guests and better topics. And it is good to see your progression like that in anything and social media for all the things that we talk bad about does help us do that. Yeah. You know, social media, uh, can be amazing. Right. And, and really like, you know, there's a feature on a lot of the social media things that are like, uh, memories, right? And you get to look back, yeah. you know, where you were so many years ago or your kids. And so it, it really puts things in perspective. You know, it can also be very distracting, right? And and that's maybe one of the, the bad habits that can come out of it is we live in a world where social media is constantly trying to rob us of our, our time. And so we really have to leverage it in the right way to really get out of it what we want. Cause the average person today, they're spending four to five hours, four to six hours on social media. It's became the new TV uh, to where people are on social media more than they used to watch TV. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that, I guess you could, you could use the social media um, as an anchor habit and put other healthy habits into it. Add to that recipe you're talking about, right? For sure. And, you know, the the hardest thing, you know, with social media is you could be on there for one thing and, you know, 10, 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, you haven't moved. And all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at somebody you knew in high school and, right, you know, it's like, I it. man, I just spent 30 <laughs> minutes on this and I haven't done anything. And so... I think one of the biggest things that that we have to do is like, hey, get on there with a purpose. Um, and really what we teach a lot of the business owners we work with is like, hey, if you're already on there, you might as well make money while you're doing it. Um, so have a purpose when you're on there because it's just too easy to get sucked into it and get lost. And all of a sudden, you know, four or five hours goes by in your day and it's like, well, what have I actually accomplished? Right. Right. Well, speaking of social media, you've got a nice looking Facebook page. Tell us about your Facebook and about how people can get a hold of you. Yeah. So um, obviously most of the the stuff that I do is either on Facebook, um, you know, Jesse, J E S S E E W E L L. Um, I do actually teach health professionals how to build, grow, and scale their business, leveraging their Facebook profile. Um, we have a habit system specifically for that, um, and that's where we do a lot of you know our content, a lot of you know just the things we talk about. I'm also on Instagram, uh, where it's Jesse Ewell, um, you know, and I just started kind of messing around with YouTube a little bit more, uh, so we're kind of getting into that too, but. Yeah, we, we definitely, everything that we do is we put out on social media. I mean, obviously there's 50 free platforms that you can market on today. Um, so there's really no excuse why someone can't be successful or can't market themselves. But a lot of times it's just our own personal stories that get in the way of us doing that. Agree. And I always like to uh, share people's comments. Kelly Young is one of our loyal viewers and listeners, and she um, uh, said she shared this, so she must have liked it. So, so thank you for that, Kelly. Thank well, you for hey, watching you, and Kelly. viewing and commenting and, and sharing. So, Jesse, as we wrap this podcast up, what do you have a passion for? I mean, I, I really have a passion for you know results and transformation, um, and that's something, and and really helping people push themselves to places they never thought they could you know, themselves. And, um, you know, everything that we talk about is about getting results, helping people transform. And 
kind of thinking like cracking an egg open, right? And, and just seeing what comes out of that. And and transformation has always been a part of my life. It's always been a part of the people I help. And and that's you know really what I'm passionate about. I love it. I love it. So thank you, Jesse, for being on our podcast today and helping us realize our goal, which is to educate and empower people to take charge of their own health. Um, and personal, professional habits go right into that. So thank you so much for doing that, Jesse. Thank you guys so much for having me on. And listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Speaking of transitions, you don't want to miss out Monday. We have Limitless Lindy on. She has a carnivore story and a weight loss story. Um, Dr. Sean Baker has interviewed her and Joe Rogan has mentioned her. She was over 700 pounds and she lost like 500. So you do not want to miss out. She's going to be on our podcast because it's Australian time. We can't do it at noon. So we're going to do it at 2.30 because they're like 18 hours difference or something. So 2.30 to 3.30 Pacific Standard Time, Monday, Limitless Lindy um, sharing her weight loss journey. So thank you for listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you. Thank you.